For years, Orange County was a solidly red voter block in a sea of California blue. Ronald Reagan once called Orange County the place where good Republicans go to die. But times have changed, and now that area is solidly purple and is seen as an indicator for how the state and more broadly the country votes. Tonight, we're hearing from the heads of both parties in Orange County. Earlier, I spoke with the chairwoman of the Orange County Democratic Party. Ada, welcome to Inside the Issues. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. It's, it's been years since we've spoken. Yes. It's great to see you, too. We spoke in San Francisco after the California Democratic Convention, and a lot's happened in Orange County since then. I want to talk about that, but first, just a bit about your life story, because the reason you do this work comes from the way you grew up in Nicaragua. Yes, yeah, so I came to the United States uh, when I was seven years old, um, fled a dictator and a civil war. Uh, I can recall you know, going to the supermarket with my father. And at some point, I just busted out singing revolutionary songs. Mm. And that was not the thing to do in the supermarket. And so my dad grabbed me, and we walked out of the store without, you know, the things that we came there for. Wow. And so, you know, that was a very big lesson for me, um, you know, and just feeling, um, you know, uh, my country war-torn, you know, uh, having to be, uh, you know, in the bottom of the, you know, table with bombs. It was a very scary situation. Um, but I was lucky to come to the States. Uh, unfortunately, not all of us made it. Um, the woman that taught me those revolutionary songs was my cousin. Mm. And she, you know, she died before we got here. Um, so that's a very clear sign to me um, that my voice matters, mm. that what I say and the way that I, you know, participate in democracy is really important, and I've carried that through my career. You know, not only, you know, in making sure that my rights are protected and that workers' rights are protected, you know, as a, as a labor leader, but also in making sure that people vote and use something that they have that's so precious, you know, which is their, vo their, their vote and their voice. And so... It's very important to me. Well, it's very moving to hear you say that. I think it's a beautiful story, especially when it comes to an election year, because people take that right to vote for granted. And you talk about being a labor leader, Unite Here Local 11 is one of the labor unions that you're associated with. That's correct. Uh, we can talk a little bit about labor, but before we do that, let's just talk about not democracy with a lowercase d, but the Democratic Party with an uppercase d in Orange County since the last time we spoke. So significant gains made for the party. Just give yes. us a sense of what's been happening there and how you're viewing this election year. So 2019, we turned Orange County voter registration blue. Mm. Today, we're 70,000 voter registrations in the lead. We have more trustees on school boards that are Democrats than Republicans throughout the county. We flipped Orange County Board of Supervisor blue. So uh, we have three Board of Supervisors that are blue. And, um, and we're turning cities, you know, San Clemente, we have, we're, we're, we're taking council seats in very difficult uh, places in Orange County, in South Orange County. So it's very exciting. We're building our infrastructure, you know, not only of funding, but also people power, which is, you know, something that I feel very, uh, very tied to that the, you know, democratic process includes having a bunch of volunteers getting out the vote and making sure that we protect our democracy. And the rising power of Latino voters, as I know you can relate to personally, is a big part of it when it comes to some of the cities that you're mentioning. But of course, the Republican Party is still very strong, as I mentioned at the beginning, once considered an absolute haven for conservative thought, still very much so, very close. Uh, and Huntington Beach is one of those cities that we think about here. It's just one that gets attention in part because of how strident it is in some of its policies. There's two of these measures that are on the ballot this time, one about uh, voter ID laws, That's potentially correct. for municipal elections and ballot monitoring, uh, also about flying the pride flag right. over City Hall. Uh, what is the Democratic response in Orange County to what we're seeing in Huntington Beach? Well, we have launched, uh, along with uh, residents of in Huntington Beach, a big organizing drive to get people involved. Yeah. Uh, and I'm really happy to say that we have folks from, you know, every part of Huntington Beach moving, uh, you know, to to make sure that these ballot measures do not pass. And mm -hmm. we saw Rob Bonta and Shirley Weber, uh, you know, send a letter early on to the, the council saying if that makes it to the ballot, 
you know, there are some really big issues with you asking for voter ID. So I, you know, not only uh, do I have faith in the, in the activists that are helping move that forward, but there's a very big, um, it's indicative that that's not a place where we want to go and we're, we're hoping in March 5th that we'll see uh, that those ballot initiatives uh, will have been defeated. Yeah, we've, we've had the mayor on the show, we've talked about it, and, and uh, there's a lot more to talk about there. But we should talk, as I mentioned earlier, about the fact that these congressional seats largely located in Orange County may be key to the balance of power in the House. Right now, Republicans hold the House by just two votes for the majority. Talk about some of the races that you're looking at, some of the seats. Yeah, so I'll just say that democracy runs through California, specifically through Orange County, mm -hmm. where we have a whole bunch of seats, right? We have, we will protect and keep the 47th, which is Katie Porter seat. She has obviously fought for that seat. She showed us that the impossible was possible by winning that seat. And, um, and we will keep that. She's been training, you know, the electorate to make sure that we're you know, voting, that we're voting uh, in that district and that it's we're a, voting it's, blue. It's a tough race right now. It is now. a tough Dave race. Dave and Joanna White's going at yes, each other with yes. some really intense ads. There's allegations of racist dog whistles, there's drunk driving histories coming up too. What's your take on the way that these politics are kind of churning within your party there for that receipt? Well, look, you know, our endorsed candidate is, is Dave Min, yeah. and so we're going to push forward with our endorsed candidate. You know, we have, the primaries are difficult in, you know, everywhere you slice it or dice it, but I'm mm -hmm. thankful for that because that is a part of democracy and that is a part of uh, you know making sure that different parts of our parties participate but when we move forward to November we move forward in a more um, in a more uni union um, unified way. Yeah. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Uh, Katie Porter running for Senate. Some Democrats are upset that she's vacating the seat that now becomes this race and Democratic dollars are going into some of these other, going into that Senate race between Schiff and Porter. Of course, Garvey may change that depending on who ends up being top two. But what's your take on what we're seeing in the Senate race? I think we're very lucky in California to have three excellent choices mm. in 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 the congressional folks that are running for Senate. And I I think we'll be blessed with any of them that will bring our California values to the Senate. And we're ready to proceed, uh, you know, um, after the March primary um, to see what happens there. We think we're going to, you know, have two Democrats move forward, so maybe not so fast, right? <laughs> yeah, we'll maybe see. not so fast. Maybe yeah. we'll continue to have this. But, you know, we're rooting for our three candidates. Right. Uh, and, you know, uh, and, and we'll wait to see what happens there. Well, there are some really big issues, and just in our last moment, uh, Alabama State Supreme Court saying uh, embryos are considered children. It's affecting IVF procedures and opportunities there in that state. Of course, California has a very different law when it comes to that, but it is a bigger issue in this post-Dobbs, Roe overturned world. Do you see abortion being a big issue in Orange County in terms of it driving most of the Democratic is. Party? We will, have, we will have that as a drive in November to the polls, not only Democratic women, but also Republican women yeah. that will stick um, uh, to protect, you know, reproductive rights. And it's a shame that we're seeing that. There's one thing that Democrats know, that we are going to stand up for women's rights and reproductive rights. Yeah. And so we're going to get the vote out um, to make sure that, you know, we're continuing to protect California. Yeah, well, it is just one of many issues that are going to be on the ballot. And I want to just thank you so much for coming in, talking about the party, talking about Orange County. Hope to do something with you sometime soon. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Eddie Bersenio. Thank you so much.